Ladies and gentlemen, it's karate time. <laughs> yeah! Hey, Cobra yeah. Kai Season 4, Woo. Episode 9. Crazy, Crazy shit, shit is, is going, going down. down, everybody. All right, look, let's talk about this. First, be sure you like, subscribe, click the bell. You're not going to want to miss all the incredible videos like this where we just sit around and just talk about random bullshit. All right, <laughs> let's. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Like, first yeah. of all, we called it that they, they, they needed two episodes for the tournament this yeah, season. Yeah, we said that. Yeah, we did say that, and I'm glad they listened. Frankly, I almost think they needed three. There's yeah. still, there was so much we still did not get to oh, yeah. in the tournament. It, it's just not handled the way I want it to be handled. The intensity of Karate Kid 1's tournament, mm -hmm. well, when there was only one kid. It was just Daniel that you're rooting for. Yeah. And uh, and now here we are with all these kids you're rooting for, and each one of them has their own story. Uh -huh. And yet they're limited to either like a quick montage or maybe you get to see the fight, but you don't get a lot of buildup around it. You know, hey, how come not yeah. one kid in the audience has yelled, Johnny, you're a cream puff <laughs> this whole time here? I, I, I yeah. really need that. No you know? references to a body bag or anything. Nothing, nothing like that. What is like wrong that. with this generation? I'm not sure. So it would be fun if we could have more of the, if they could kind of pull the stories apart a little bit more. Like Miguel here, mm. Miguel has been one of our most central figures yeah. for four seasons. Mm-hmm. And now he, he, like all his little stories here, barely got attention. Mm. I almost forgot about Miguel in this episode, honestly. Oh my! I swear to God, because you you hardly really see him fight. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything building up to it. We we saw him last night when, uh, yeah. you know, when Johnny said, "Old man can kick." Yeah. <laughs> and, and he's like, I, "I don't know what that means, but okay." Yeah. And then Johnny ends up saying, "I love you to Robbie." So that was the night before his big tournament, and we didn't see. The big psychological buildup. We didn't see like yeah. Miguel wanted this so bad when he lost the use of his legs. Yeah. And then here he was, and all he was thinking about the night before was a thing with Sam. And all he's thinking about now is how Johnny is just all focused on winning, like Chris was. And, and on Robbie. Yeah, and on Robbie, right. Yeah. So so I just I don't feel like this episode did a whole lot of good for Miguel. I think a lot was stuck on the, the cutting room floor or left on the cutting room floor. Mm. And I think for a lot of the characters, I could say that, that mm -hmm. we, I could use some reminding of where their, what their headspace is like as they go into some of these fights and as they find out who they're going to fight too. Yeah. You know, Hey, what about this mm -hmm. too? Kyler was there and Sam is there. Yeah. And there wasn't even like a reference. There wasn't even like yeah. a walking by each other. There wasn't even like, uh, he could have said so many snotty fucking things to her, mm -hmm. you know? And and there could have just been like a little funny moment or maybe she pulls a little like a Daniel LaRusso kind of prank on him. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe gets him wet with something and then runs off. Just something to, because those two should hate each other Yeah, there still. was no interaction whatsoever. And they had dated and Kyler's been to the house and. and twice. Then, twice. And then. <laughs> once as a guest. And once as a. As an intruder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he made her life hell at school by spreading rumors about her and all of this kind of stuff. And then there wasn't even a, an acknowledgement between them at the tournament. So that was kind of weird. Yeah, there's so many non-acknowledgements going on. And we already yeah. bitched about how in episode eight, uh, Johnny and Daniel's mom didn't even have any words of any kind, right? So, <laughs> Well, it's Daniel's mom, but... <laughs> what did I say? Johnny and Daniel's mom. <laughs> That's what I said. What the fuck are you talking about? You just that I, I got that right. Johnny and Daniel's mom. Okay, moving on. What you, I'm not saying Johnny and Daniel have the same mom. That's what it sounds like. I'm, okay, let me try this again. Johnny and the mom of Daniel, who I just called Daniel's mom. Okay, so there, anyway, so yeah, this episode left a lot of that stuff on the floor, and and but yet they they're moving so fast once again, like they didn't even show us the other. Uh, and we're not bitch. We love the show. You guys know that, right? We love the show. We we're love the show. We're very passionate about Cobra Kai. But just we we're not going to sit here and just talk about the good things. Let's talk about some of the goofy things. When the announcer introduced all the dojos, we only saw him introduce the three we care about, and then that was it. He, there was no montage. They couldn't they have just sewn together a couple of clips of him being like Tapuga Can whatever it is Tacoma Canyon Karate yeah. and then this karate and this they they could have just done that a little bit. Instead, you almost got the impression that the only yeah. the only dojos there were the three that we it care really about. It really felt that way for much of the tournament throughout the the two final episodes. So, yeah, um, yeah, it felt in so in that respect, it it felt a lot smaller. It really that did. Previous tournament. I'd look around and I see ninety-five percent of the 
the the the, the combatants. What, what do you call these? Kids? They're just the, the kids in the tournament. Yeah, like ninety five percent were from one of these three dojos, and then occasionally there was like a guy in like like a blue do, like a blue gi or something. Yeah, but very very rarely. And like this is supposed to be. It looked like there was about ten total dojos or so. Uh-huh. Right from what little bit you could tell. Anyway, we won't go on about that. Yeah, but that, that moving was, on. It was weird, and and again, it makes the show look cheap. It just makes it look like they're they're cutting corners and they're 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 almost like a little like a kids like a Disney kids show. Mm. You know, like they're just like oh whatever. No one's gonna be smart enough to catch yeah, on. I see your point. You know. So anyway, okay. So so he introduces three dojos, but then magically there's like seven or eight more. Um. No real references to the night before, and the night before was catastrophic for virtually every character except Devin Lee. <laughs> Everybody else <clears throat> had a huge night before. Everybody was at prom. Devin wasn't at prom, was she? I don't remember seeing her at prom. Yeah, I don't think she was there. I'm not sure she's a junior. Yeah, we don't know. She might be. Oh, no, no, she is, because remember in debate, that's when... Uh, but anyway, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. So, so there wasn't a lot of really was no reference to what happened the night before. Um, None of the kids were hung over or anything. Yeah, not one was hung over. <laughs> not one was bitching about having a rough night. Nothing. And we didn't see them interacting and, and following up on the fallout from what it just. I mean, what had just happened the night before was big. Yeah. Robbie and Miguel had a rematch. Yeah. Next to a fucking pool of all things, and Sam and Tori had a rematch. Yeah. Even though they were all going to fight at the tournament. Yeah, it it was it was like the school thing all over again almost. Yeah. And then somehow once they all got wet, they said screw it. Yeah, everyone was like, you know, I I want to go home. And then Tori and and Robbie were like, I don't know, lighthearted about the whole thing, just having fun in the pool. Yeah, it, it was very odd. Yeah. So, I just think it's funny that Water considering everything. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> considering some of the things that had gone on. How about Terry Silver? full-blown fucking staged an attack on Johnny. Yeah. Kicked him hard. Old man can kick. And then this next day, Johnny doesn't have a mark on him, and it never comes up. Like, there's not even a couple of bad looks. I could have really, unless I just missed something completely, but I could have really used, Yeah, you know, Johnny kind of... It, it was another time. There was, there was like, no acknowledgement between Johnny and Silver about the, the night before. None. And I, I really could have used, because this almost felt to me like this was, like, a month later. I had to keep reminding myself, they just, this was just the night before yeah. when all this shit went down. Yeah. But you know what? So, so this is weird. <laughs> Because there was an acknowledgement look between Daniel and Terry Silver from 35 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, there's there's a lot of weird connective tissue. The, the writers are amazing, and we love the show insanely. But I do wish that they'd give us a little more to kind of remind us, like, look, that all just happened the night before. Here's how everyone's feeling today. Instead, it was just, ah, forget it all. We're at the tournament. That's it. That's all that matters. It was a fast-paced episode. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I feel like the vice was just tightening around Cobra Kai's metaphorical balls. <laughs> you know, well said. But uh, now you're speaking my language. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I was going to speak your language. Those blue mats. I tell amazing. you, ever since we got the blue mat, that, that dude really he never lets he, it go. He's so passionate since about season the blue one. Mats. He's been so obsessed with the blue mats. I love that guy. Oh my god, he's fun. All right, so seeing Eli, how did you like seeing Eli in a Miyagi Dogi? And in the tournament, mm -hmm. isn't that a little funny considering last year's tournament, how wild he was and yeah, it, it was a real different kind of thing. I really like Eli. I don't really care for Hawk, mm -hmm. but I really like Eli. He's finding his balance. Yeah. So and that's then, kind of cool to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is cool to see that he, he really belongs at Miyagi though. He, yeah. He's doing so well. Yeah. Nice to see he's him there. Growing as a person and as a fighter. And I, I think he's putting things in perspective. Exactly. And then when Kyler, who doesn't grow at all, by no. the way, Kyler, forget it. Kyler walks up to him and once again calls him lit. Mm -hmm. I am so tired of hearing Kyler put people down yeah. and be a prick. First of all, Kyler's not a badass. He loses most of the time. He does. And then he loses to, to Eli three to nothing. He didn't even get one point. Not one. I'm, I'm glad they did that to him. Why does Kreese keep him on the team? I don't know. He's not very good. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so he calls he calls Eli Lip. That pissed everybody off. That pissed me off for sure. That kiss from Moon almost saved the whole tournament, <laughs> frankly, because it, it it gave Eli such. It really put Eli in the game all over again. Like he he really played that well, Jacob yeah. Bertrand, the actor. He really played it well. Yeah. So that was fucking awesome. 
was it this episode when he says uh when uh when Daniel's like, is it Eli or is it Hawk? And he goes, mm. I'm the guy who's going to win this whole fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, uh, that's that's one of my favorite lines ever by Eli. Yeah. Or by anybody on the show. I love that. I'm going to win this whole fucking thing. Yeah. That was badass. I'm so glad he whipped Kyler's ass. Yes. Um, there were some great, great moments in, in this episode. Even the Carrie Underwood thing, which yeah. at first I kind of thought, oh, why are we doing this with Cobra Kai? Why are we uh -huh. using this as a platform to bring in special cameos just to get people talking? And it felt like like um, just a gimmick, you know? Um, but yeah. then then I saw what song she was doing. I mean, yeah. it felt like a gimmick before I knew what song she was doing. I thought she was just going to do some random song. Right. Then I realized this was genius. Once they get, see, the writers almost never really let you down. Yeah, They're, no, they do a lot of fake outs and they, they, they did a little bit of a fake out with Carrie Underwood too. You thought so? You yeah. also thought that maybe it was going nowhere? Because when she started to sing, it started off sounding like she was going to sing something like, like a ballad and, and something whatever it did not sound like she was about to rock out a survivor tune yeah that's a good point I, I was faked out and i was ready to just kind of take a little nap for a couple minutes and then instead she did an incredible version yeah. incredible version of moment of truth yeah and it was a good opportunity to give us some montage stuff to kind of do yes. what the show wants to do which was just hurry up and tell some of the little stories about mm -hmm. the characters that are not so upfront, And just so you see a couple of quick fights and you kind of get a, a sense of, okay, so so-and-so beats so-and-so. All right, cool. Yeah. That was incredibly well done. I that loved a, it. Yeah. It was a good use of the time and she, she did a great job with the song. I love Carrie Underwood. Yeah, it was incredible. She did a better job than Survivor. I, I, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I think her version is actually also better. Love, love, love Survivor. Yeah. Though. We're huge Survivor fans, but I think in this particular case, hers is probably better. So let's finish up talking about Kenny's story, right? Mm, yeah. What do we think of what's the way he's, I'll tell you this. We never got to see anyone's parents in the crowd, except for mm. Amanda LaRusso and, yeah. and Miguel's mom and, uh, and grandma. Yeah. So yeah. we don't know. Yeah. 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 So we don't know what any of the parents are dealing with. If Kenny's dad or mom were there or what, because mm -hmm. they have super busy schedules. So we don't know that side of Kenny's story, but for me, I mean, he's he's the next Karate Kid right now. As far I know, we're mm -hmm. supposed to be seeing him as a bad guy, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm on Kenny's side completely, and you know, he kind of has had the Daniel story here, mm -hmm. where he had to rise up and get as far as he could. Yeah. In the tournament. Yeah. And um, I, I'm just I'm I'm really proud of that kid. I'm glad that he's <laughs> doing all this, and I'm, I'm glad that he's he i'm just glad to see that in a few months that that character went from being so fucking bullied by the biggest pieces of shit to to now he's doing so well in this tournament he even at the fight robbie mm. which by the way i know they're all under 18 mm -hmm. but can we acknowledge like robbie is like 17 mm -hmm. this kid's not even in high school yeah and he's really small yeah. like he's small enough to be in the third grade Oh, <laughs> and yet they, they had, I don't think I'm exaggerating. So to have Robbie fight him just feels like odd to me. I, I'm like, what, is this really going to happen? Yeah, it, it, it feels like a bit of a mismatch, but I mean, it's the luck of the draw. That's what Robbie said. Yeah. Well, anyway, look, Kenny's, Kenny's awesome. I, I'm really glad yeah. his story's good here. And I, I really like some of the shit going on between Crease and Silver too. It, it, it's the, just seeing them in this episode working together for the most part mm -hmm. and dealing with the kids and everything in the way they were. I just thought it was so cool to see these characters at this point, even yeah. though we knew how it was going to end. Mm -hmm. It was just a great thing to see it, to see everybody under this roof together, all, all yeah. working against each other like that was great. And then we had our cliffhanger. Yeah, big cliffhanger here with Miguel. Oh. Um, he tried the flying tornado kick, didn't he? Yeah, he was giving, yeah. That's what he was up to. Fucking Johnny is tornado shit. Uh -huh. Don't do that. And so he's up against Hawk or Eli or the guy who's going to win this whole fucking thing. Yep, yep. All, <laughs> all of them. Sustains the injury. I, I thought this was uh, kind of unnecessary considering how quickly it got rectified in, in the following episode. But but yeah, still a, a dramatic ending, right? It If there's one thing these guys can do, it is give us amazing cliffhangers. And yeah. with this scene that is in our thumbnail, by the way, um, with Miguel, I just saw that and I went, oh, my God, what do they do? What do they do? Oh, my God, Miguel. Yeah. Ooh, hot drama. <laughs> <laughs> well, crazy shit went on indeed. Listen, guys, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell. 
do all kinds of shit. You know, read your book if you're like the voice of reason. Um, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. We're going to talk about episode.